Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a K Univox Effector Les Paul copy. This is one of those instruments from around the early 70s into the early 80s that you could buy in like a Sears catalog. These were import guitars back when those manufacturers had an ounce of dignity left in them and they actually branded things with their own names instead of like today with the Chibsons just putting Gibson on everything. And that's kind of what makes these so unique is that you can actually identify who made them and there's like cult followings for some of these brands. A few of those that you might have heard of include Ibanez, Lotus, Hondo and Hondo 2, Aria, Aria Pro, Greco, Bernie, Electra models. I featured a few of those, like the Lotus Mini Les Paul, and I had a Hondo D18 on the channel a long time ago. But they're just essentially copies of the big name brands made overseas. And this one has to be one of the more interesting ones that most people will come across at some point in time or other and be intrigued by them because Built-in effects, look at them all here. You've got in and out of phase, you've got effects on and off, which include echo, tremolo, wah, and whirlwind, even a built-in fuzz pedal with this thing. On top of that, you have a headphone jack, which is normally broken, like in the case of this one. But all that seems intriguing on, you know, like a $250 to $400 guitar used. And there's never really been any good sound recordings of these things on YouTube, and that's why I wanted to pick one of these things up. But before we get to that, what is this actually based on? What idea did they steal for this? I'm going to make the argument that it was the Les Paul recording model, because look at this. Does, doesn't this giant panel here look familiar? You've got the switches here, you got all the knobs. I mean, take a look at the pick guard. They are definitely very similar looking instruments. So I truly believe when they knocked these off, they thought the Les Paul recording could do all those things or they wanted to just improve upon it. We'll learn a little bit more about the recording model and what it does next week. But essentially these are low impedance pickups originally. These are like really great jazzy sounding guitars. And there's a few different brands that made them looking like this. You can't really consider this video a review on the K Univox Effector because this one, it's got a bunch of replaced parts. The entire neck on this thing has been replaced. I have the original neck here. You can see it doesn't have any name brand on it, but you can see it has the diamond, which is kind of emulating the custom logo here from the Les Paul recording. But due to the error that these things were made, they did have a volute at the back of the headstock as well. Now, the reason why the neck has been replaced on this one is somebody tried to refret this and they did a terrible job to the point where it's not even worth saving this thing. I mean, look at all the inlays that were popping out. They glued them in. The fret ends are just so sharp. They're not even seated in there properly. This thing, it's just kind of a piece of history at this point because it's not worth the time and effort to really restore it unless you got nothing else better to do and you got the know-how. I was told this was a neck made for this guitar. Uh, it turned out to just be a $50 neck off of Amazon. Thank you for the person who commented that on the unboxing video. And it appears we've got some ESP tuners on this. Now, thankfully, the pickups are original, finish is original. I believe bridge and tailpiece are original. So it's like the body's good to go. So we can at least hear how these things sounded. But as far as the playability issues, this thing has really bad intonation. It doesn't stay in tune the best. I'm almost thinking there's something wrong with the neck pocket itself because it almost seems like this neck is twisted or warped in a weird way. But, and I think the neck angle could definitely be set better. But I got it good enough that we can at least get some tone samples out of it. But before we do that, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and learn a little bit about the individual parts. All right, inside of this beast, you take the pickup covers off and you see these aren't actually humbuckers. These are just single coils with another dummy coil right here. And the covers aren't actually soldered on. They're just kind of glued together. So, I mean, they're not the easiest to take off, but they're not completely secure either. The neck cavity looks pretty rough here. Same thing with the bridge pickup cavity. The pickups themselves, besides just being dummy single coils 
Yeah, there's not too much more to go over with them. But how they built this guitar is just really interesting. Because notice, there's just like a complete gap over this top. Like if you knock on the top of this instrument, it sounds like it's chambered. A little bit more on that here in a second. The bridge is your standard overseas styled one, kind of ABR1 in look. And it's a full weight tailpiece here. But here's where things get interesting. All these effects. What does it actually look like under here? We've got like really decrepitly old paper towels in there. Really crude routing job. But this is what all of this looks like. It looks like we have 500k pots. Then we have all these millions of different switches. You've got tons of capacitors and stuff within there. I would hate to have to fix one of these if something went wrong in here. But here's the big thing, how this thing was made. So it looks like for the bridge and tailpiece, they just stuck a couple of slabs of wood right there so they could drill into them. But the rest of the top is just carved over the base of the body. So it, there's just these huge gaps right here. But that's that's what you're buying if you get one of these this is the replacement neck so getting measurements and stuff doesn't really help document this guitar but there is a pretty nice sized crack right there in our fretboard but we have a 1.67 inch nut width which increases to 2.03 at the 12th 0.86 inches at the first and 0.97 at the 12th the effects do need a 9 volt battery which is located in the back of the instrument. You can take off just the one little area to switch out the battery real quick, but this is what it looks like if you take everything out of the assembly, and it weighs 9 pounds 4.4 ounces. Now that we know what makes this instrument up, let's finally hear how it sounds. In phase, no effects. In phase amp distortion. <laughs> Now we'll turn the effects on. All the sound gets cut, because I don't currently have any of the effects turned on. So we'll do the first one here, which is Echo. You can control the speed of it with the speed knob. So that was turned all the way up, let's turn it all the way down. Kind of an interesting effect to play with. Now if I turn that off and turn the middle one on, I don't get any sound. Not sure if I'm supposed to, but I believe what the setting is is you're supposed to have both the switches on to get to the next one called tremolo.
next one will be the third switch pushed on. I believe this might be the whirlwind setting. two on you get to the wah setting maybe <laughs> setting is the fuzz setting so just as a quick recap here this is what it sounds like with my amp distortion so now the built-in fuzz Speed doesn't seem to do anything. It's kind of got a grungy vibe to it. It's nothing spectacular, but hey, it's an effect. Everything, you know, I would say I like the echo setting. It sounds pretty all right. The tremolo also sounds good. And I find myself really digging the out of phase tone. It's a very vintagey sound to it. Reminds me of the Frank Zappa SG. So in the end, do I suggest picking one of these things up? No, not really. <laughs> I was not inspired by this instrument in the slightest. This thing's been more of a headache for me just trying to get it playable. So anybody who pays the asking prices of like 600 bucks for one of these, I think you're crazy, but they are kind of a quirky part of history. We'll do a quick black light test here because these are always fun. It seems you got a weird spot right there, but it is glowing. I like the way these inlays glow as well. The body's glowing. I mean, this thing's pretty worn in general. I hope you enjoyed this look at the K Univox Effector guitar. If you're interested in it, I'll put it on Reverb, but local pickup only. If you want to pay shipping, just know you're not getting a fully functional guitar. It definitely needs some setup work to be a little bit more inspiring. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.